What is it, darling? It just isn't going to be like a family Christmas, Richie. But, darling, the community's our family now. We have 24 guests, 11 staff. It'll be like 35 relatives sitting down at Christmas dinner. But I don't want McBlain to cook the Christmas dinner. I want to do it myself. Why, darling? Uh, McBlain may be a little bit... Um... Unsophisticated, incomprehensible, dirty, violent and covered in boil plaster. Uh, yes, he may be a little unsophisticated, incomprehensible, dirty, violent and covered in boil plaster, but he's a marvellous cook, darling. And you're afraid of him? And I'm afraid. <laughs> really? What, what on earth made you say that? Afraid of McBlain? Listen, uh, if you want to cook Christmas dinner, I'll tell him first thing in the morning. You mustn't worry about petty things like that, darling. <laughs> I go to sleep. Ah, morning, McLean. Spliff your clunge. Ah. <laughs> right, point taken, McLean. Uh, I, I just thought I'd like to come in and have a little chat with you, if that's, that's all right. Ah. <laughs> so, 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 so that'll be me knocking at the door. <laughs> ah, oh, there you are, McLean. Jolly good. <laughs> Uh, may I say, on behalf of the staff, we thought the carbonade de Boeuf Flamand were absolutely superb yesterday. Uh, right, uh, uh, the thing is, McLean, frankly, uh, my wife would, um, well, that is my wife and I, would, uh, with, with the possible exception of myself, would, would like it if, uh, if uh, we could have the carbonade de Boeuf Flamand again sometime. Flank like my brooch with his flanges. Ah, oh, now that I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, only eight brazing days to Christmas, eh? We Jimmy has new to get my bell black dolls. Up your clunge. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit over commercialised, I quite agree. Yes. Uh, looking forward to seeing your relatives, I imagine, I am. Ah, nee. Snitty clenges when he snoots to a hangle breezel. Uh, no, no, the family's perfect, quite agree. <laughs> spending Christmas with friends, I imagine. Ah, nee. Badly sniffled basque nuds. I'll be Stainer. Yeah. Oh, I'll be, oh, you'll be spending Christmas with Albie Stainer. Johnny, good. Couldn't be better. Yeah. <laughs> nice chap, is he? I'll be Stainer. Yes. I'll be Stainer. Yes, I'll be Stainer. I'll, I'll be, oh, you'll be staying here. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> oh Johnny, good. Oh, couldn't be better. Yeah. Be able to cook Christmas dinner. <laughs> oh, that is splendid news. Carry on, McLean. Darling, we've had a marvellous Christmas, a wonderful New Year. You realise how right I was to persuade McBlain to stay on? We've got 35 guests, five houses bursting at the seams, so what's, what's the worry? Well, that's what's worrying me. I just can't cram everybody into the accommodation. We'll end up by boarding people out in Lisbon Crescent and Nairobi Avenue. It's turning my job into a nightmare. Heaven's <laughs> sake, is that all? I'll fix that up tomorrow morning. People have to share, that's all. You mustn't make difficulties over minor matters like that, darling. And who can we get to share? Anybody. Uh, Doc Morrissey and CJ, for example. Oh, I'd like to see you get Doc Morrissey and CJ to share a room. Easy. I'll bet you a fiver I can, all right? All right. All right. Madam Secretary, uh, Reggie here, will you, will you sir, on green, will you bring in CJ in now, please? Thank you very much. <laughs> ah. 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 Morning. Ah. Morning, Reggie. Morning, work stress therapist. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Ah. Well, CJ, success is growing by the week. I knew it would, Bridget. It's a long lane that gathers no moss. It certainly is, Adrian. <laughs> but success brings its own problems. People are going to have to make sacrifices. Glad to hear it, Reggie. Sacrifice never killed the cat. It certainly didn't, Adrian. <laughs> I want you to share your bedroom with McLean. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh. I think I know what you're trying to say, CJ. You're careful, careful, you're on red. I think I know what you're You're trying to say that you didn't get where you are today by sleeping with sweaty Caledonian chef. Yes, I, 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 I didn't realise you would feel quite so strongly about it, CJ. So I'll tell you what I'll do. You can share with Doc Morrissey instead. Oh, thank you, Reggie. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, yes. Oh, thank, yes. oh, thank, yes. you, thank you, Reggie. Oh, very thank clever. You. If you'd asked him to share with Doc Morrissey straight <laughs> off, he'd have gone berserk. Exactly, but now he agrees, in eager gratitude, at being spared the odoriferous Scott. <laughs> now, thrilled to my shrewdness, as gently and tactfully I try the same simple psychological trick on our Doc. Right, show him in. <laughs> Doc? Oh. Oh, thank you. Ah, morning, Doc. Come oh. in, come in, come in. Sit down, no? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Doc, I want you to share your bedroom with McLean. Reggie! Oh, oh, you had me going there for a minute, Elizabeth. Oh, no, it's not a joke, no. Doc. We really are terribly crowded. Yes, I know, but McLean... He's, he's a superb cook. Look, red rum is a fine horse, but I've no intention of sharing with <laughs> him. All right, Doc, I'll tell you what I'll do. You can share with CJ instead. CJ? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
community is a great success. We now have 38 guests. Super! <laughs> Knockout. My football with no opposition isn't a success, despite last week's 36-0 win. I still don't think I'm a football person. And so you changed the system, darling. I'm proud of you. Oh, thanks, Poggle Chops. I'm proud of you, too. <laughs> I don't even mind you calling me Poggle Chops anymore. Oh, thanks, Squiggly uh, Poos. Marital bliss, a touching spectacle. Uh, success on all sides. <laughs> a new system, eh, Tom? Well, eh? <laughs> well, each team plays the wrong way and tries to score for the opponents. Yes. This encourages unselfishness and discourages aggression. It means that if you foul your opponents, you're really fouling yourself, so there's no point in fouling. <laughs> <laughs> what about that, then, eh? Only Tom could have thought of something. Like Thanks, Reggie. <laughs> no cock up on football front. <laughs> <laughs> no cock up on any front, Jimmy. It's all absolutely marvellous, and people are flocking here. And Jimmy, may I say how wonderful it is to see you teaching VAT inspectors to help old ladies across the road, <laughs> making quantity surveys clear anchor a grove of litter. Yeah, cleared Fredwell's pond today, flushed out old bedsteads in Mapping Wood. Tomorrow, mopping up operations, isolated pockets of litter throughout Botchley. Uh, <laughs> super knocker. Success City, Arizona. I didn't get where I am today without <laughs> recognising Success City, Arizona yes, when yes. I see it. But uh, uh, yes. you're softening us up for something unpleasant, Reggie. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Clever psychological insight from our psychologist there, uh, yes. It's true, success brings its own problems. Every silver lining has a cloud. I couldn't have put that better myself. <laughs> we are running short of accommodation, so from now on the garden sheds and sunrooms you've been using for therapeutic activities will have to to become bedrooms for guests. So, uh, where do we do our activities? Yes. Well, of course, that's what I thought. Right? Yes. <laughs> From now on, all your cultural activities, etc., will have to take place in your um, uh, in your bedrooms. Oh, yes. 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 No, 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 I realise you'll be doing things in the bedrooms you wouldn't normally do in your bedrooms. I mean, Tony Culture, Linda Art, David Sachs, but there it is. It's absolutely. <laughs> Uh, may, 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 I, may I just say that very shortly there will be a chain of Perrinses stretching from Land's End to John O'Groats, and each of those communities will have its own highly paid manager. Now, I'll mention no names. No names, no pet horses. Exactly. <laughs> but it would be a super knockout idea if I were able to choose those managers from amongst my staff here, because I'm a loyalty person, and I didn't get what I am today without realising you'd have a cock up on the staff in front of you aren't a loyalty person. <laughs> Any complaints now? Well, no. <laughs> Thought not. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, we've got 41 guests now. The community's working really well, so what's worrying you? Well, Lolly, Mr Dent from the council planning office is coming tomorrow. He's got a hunt for planning irregularities. Try and close us down. Oh, is that all? You mustn't let petty things like that get you down. You'll handle him. You're a genius. Yes, yes, of course I am. Yes, you're absolutely right. Of course I am. <laughs> I should be worrying about that. I'll come straight to the point, Mr Perrin. You are conducting a business on private premises, are you not? No. Coffee? No, thank you. I find the little social niceties interfere with my concentration. Yes, they do rather, don't they? <laughs> uh, uh, McLean, McLean, Perrin here. Would you, would you, sir, on red, would you send up a coffee and biscuits for two, please? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Uh, let me up straight away. You were on the green phone. Uh, uh, ah, well spotted. Ha <laughs> ha, very well, yes. Excuse me, yes. Uh, McLean. Yes, my uh, Perry in here. I rang it just now. I said I was on red. I was actually on green, uh, which I'm on now, yes. That won't affect the coffee or the biscuit, it? No, good, thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And split your French, too. Right, thank you, mate. Yes. Now, oh, eagle eyed dent, they call you. You wouldn't be trying to divert me from the matter in hand, would you, Mr. Perry? Good Lord, no. You place adverts in the newspapers, clients arrive, they receive treatment, they pay. Now, is that or is that not a commercial venture? No. I'm a very busy man. Mr. Yes, I realise you must be with your powers of observation and intelligence. True. No, no, people come here and partake of what I offer. If when they leave they give me a few hundred pounds, it will be heartless to refuse. Ah! <laughs> Oh, my own. Ah, yes, quite. Ah, there we are. Our chef. You could probably get him condemned as a health hazard. What, is, <laughs> what, is, what exactly is it you're aiming to provide in these houses of yours? The universal panacea for all mankind. Ginger nut? Thank you. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Mr. Perry. I like the sound of your universal panacea for all mankind. It might do a bit of good. Thank you. Mmm, delicious ginger nut. Thank you. My bar job is to make sure that there are no unauthorised changes of use. I I've made no structural changes. Another ginger nut? They are. They're, they're tasty. <laughs> <laughs> structural changes aren't the be-all and end-all, Mr. Fair. I realise that, Mr. Dick. Mmm, nice ginger nut. It's quite as nice as the first. Yes, you're a shrewd judge of a ginger nut. Are you trying to soft soap me? <laughs> oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> You've got far too much moral fibre. Thank you. So, so, you, so you've made no structural change. No, 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 no. It's true that some garden sheds and some rooms are being used as, as bedrooms, but they could revert to their former use at the drop of a hat. And if the Jack Russell does big jobs in the dining room, is it on that account a downstairs toilet? <laughs> I could get you. Yes. 
I could get you on inadequate evidence. Yes, yes, yes. Though I say it myself, I shouldn't. I mustard on inadequate evidence. <laughs> I bet you're a little devil on inadequate evidence. <laughs> what a pathetic <laughs> boat! I'm sorry, what? what? My one what? precious existence what? on this enthralling planet. Yes? And that's all I can summon up. Yes, I mustard on inadequate evidence. Doesn't matter, doesn't what, matter. What a dismal piece of human flotsam I am! Yeah, no, 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 Now, normally, these little group sessions are conducted by our psychiatrist, Doc Morrissey, but he's had to go and see a psychiatrist. Now, <laughs> now, this morning, I want you to confess to all of those little innermost fears, those secret quirks, those little obsessions, worries, neuroses, kinks, uh, insanities, all that kind of thing, huh? Good. Right, off we go. Uh, anybody suffering from deep-seated aggression? Hmm? <laughs> no. uh, anybody feel a compulsion to dominate any group they're in? Hmm? Obviously not. No. I'm a raving puff. Good, good, splendid. <laughs> I mean, not splendid that you're a raving uh, uh, puff, but splendid that you're able to tell us that you're a rave, raving. But not that there's any disgrace in being a, 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 a raving. But it's very nice to be able to say nowadays, hello, I'm a... Uh... Raving puff. Exactly. <laughs> not if you own a small factory in the potteries. It's bad for trade in the potteries if you're widely known as a Jesse. <laughs> it's, it's tantamount to economic extinction. And so I lead a double life of sad deception. Mm. By day, solid businessman, pillar of the Rotary Club. By night, a shadowy figure in the gay clubs of the Five Towns. Ah, oh, well, well, well done. Not well done that you're a shadowy figure in the gay clubs, but well done that you're able to do well. I think you know what I mean by well done. Anyway, yes, good, good. Any more secret little uh, face? Yes, one here. I'm an insurance salesman. Oh, never mind. We soon cure you of that. Next. <laughs> Finished. Oh, sorry. Something absolutely dreadful's happened. Huh? I've lost my motivation. Oh, dear. I couldn't care less if there were hundreds of people wandering around tooting, seriously underinsured. Oh, dear. <laughs> you really mustn't worry about that. It may seem serious to you now, but in a few weeks' time, you'll be delighted you've lost your motivation, and a new career will beckon itself unto you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I want to regain my motivation. Oh, dear. I said, no, we don't go in. Uh, no. Any more problems? <laughs> I'm Ethel Merman. Not the legendary Ethel Merman. No, the unlegendary Ethel Merman. Uh, I'm a housewife from Gravesend. I see. What's the problem? Being called Ethel Merman. Mm. Everyone I meet trots it out like sheep. Not the legendary Ethel Merman, they say, as if no-one's ever said it before. Oh, do they really? I said to my friend Mrs Clark, pet, I said, mm. who'd have thought it? <laughs> Two of us in the one street. Both were the names of famous international artists and nobody's ever heard of us. Mm. Said the same thing to the woman in the corner shop. Nobody's ever heard of us, Shirley, I said. Mm. Shirley, Shirley Bassey. Shirley Smith. Shirley Bassey's the singer. Oh. <laughs> I answer to the name of Edwards. I see no overwhelming problem in that. Uh, and Breakspear and Phipps Partington. I'm a con man. And sometimes it's convenient to change names quickly. Ah, I mean, you really are a con man. You're not conning us, Mr... Uh... Johnston. Uh, no, I'm a con man, all right. <laughs> Uh, just now I'm selling invisible fish. Oh. Uh, six invisible trout. <laughs> With water, really. Uh, invisible food for the invisible trout. Oh, well, thank you for telling us that, Mr... Um... Meredith. Yes. Uh, <laughs> dreams I started out with, Mr Pedding. Yes, well, we, we try and do what we can for you, Mr Edwards, Phipps, Partington, Edward... <laughs> anybody, anybody else? What, what about our shy vet? Any little problems? <laughs> right, all right, well, let's discuss these problems we have. What about I? me? Hmm? Me? I have a secret, too. Yeah. A secret, Mr Dent. Inside, I'm a, I'm a friendly, delightful, genial man, generous of spirit, eager to love and help the human race. It's just that it never seems to come out that way. <laughs> they don't encourage it down the town hall. But maybe here it will oh, come out that way. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, I'll stay with you, Good, good. He's going to hell with the council. <laughs> to hell with the air vents. <laughs> can I stay, please? You can stay, Mr. Stay. Yes, I'll you can stay. Darling, you are absolutely right. Was I? Oh, yes, I am a genius. Yes, yes, I impressed Mr. Dent absolutely marvellous. Yes, he was, he, he was impressed with my easy command, my intelligence, my warmth, but above all, by my innate modesty. Yes, yes. <laughs> and not only is he not going to make any complaints, he's actually joined in the community. Huh? Everything's absolutely wonderful. And you, darling, mm, you're wonderful too. Reggie, <laughs> are you sure you're all right? Yes, of course I am, darling. Yes, worry, tension and irritability are things of the past. <laughs> yes, come in, come in. 
Morning, Tom. How lovely to see you this Sandridge morning. You all right, Reggie? Uh, he's happy, Tom. Worry, tension and irritability are things of the past. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> yes, everything's marvellous on the whole community is working perfectly. Oh, my football with each team playing for the opponents against themselves isn't working perfectly, Reggie. Ah. It's failed to remove the aggression. Mm. Since each team plays entirely for the opponents, they become the opponents who become them. Mm. And they kick the living daylights out of each other just as they always yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you must keep trying, Tom. You'll think of something. What you must do, you must persist, you see, Tom. Persistence, persistence, persistence. That's the... Reggie. Yes? Eureka. Pardon? When you, when you bashed your fist like that, you gave me an idea. Hmm? I've solved the problem. I've taken the aggression out of sport. <laughs> oh, Tom, I told you, come up with something. <laughs> what is it? Boxing. <laughs> Boxing. <laughs> I think events have moved too fast for you again, Tom. Boxing has been invented, I fear. With a difference. Non-aggressive boxing. Oh, that certainly has been invented. <laughs> yes, come in, come in. Tell me how lovely to see you this Sunbridge morning. Is he all right? He's happy. <laughs> Worry, tension and irritability are things of the past. Oh. Tony, you've arrived just in time to hear Tom's new idea for non-aggressive boxing. Non-aggressive boxing? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, boxing's aggression city, Arizona. I mean, it's Machismobile, Wyoming. Uh -huh. <laughs> Each person hits himself instead of his opponent. Ah, what about that then, eh? <laughs> Uh, no, that's exactly what it will be. <laughs> well done, Tom. <laughs> we can take it on the 5th of March, yes. Could I have some details? Yes. Your job? You run a lonely hearts column? Yes. Yes, and your problem? Feeling depressed and lonely, I see. Yes, yes. yes. Just a moment, I have somebody on red. Hello, Perrin's here on red, yes. Yeah. March the 12th, yes, we can fit you in, yes. Could I have some details, please? Name? Lewis, yes. Job? Yes, telephone engineer. Your problem? Can't communicate. I, <laughs> I have somebody... I have, I, do, I have Lonely Hearts on Green. Lonely Hearts on Green, would you like to talk to... Can't communicate on red. Just can't communicate on red. Would you like to talk to Lonely Hearts on Green? That's what parents are for. We'd like you to talk to each other. Get to know each other. That's the idea, yes. There you are. There you are. Um, how's it doing? <laughs> That's it. I'm, so, I'm sorry, there's somebody at the door. I'll have to go now. We'll see you on the 5th and the 12th, respectively. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Come in. Ah, Win Stanley. Planning officer, Botchley Borough Council. Oh, hello, Mr. Do sit down, Mr. Win Stanley. I hope you. the chair is comfortable. Did our Mr. Dent come and see you last week? He did indeed. He sat in that very chair and spoke kindly of my ginger nuts. <laughs> He's disappeared. That's odd. I saw him at lunch, crunching away quite happily. At lunch? Where? Here to the community. He's joined. Didn't he tell you? He most certainly did not. Oh. He has a secretive streak. Yes. Probably comes from keeping things private at public inquiries. Yes. <laughs> Possibly. He told me he had flu and told his wife he'd been sent to a regional sewage seminar in Harrogate of all the flimsy excuses. <laughs> and then our Mr. Pennell remembered that he'd gone to check up on you. Yes, which you yourself would have loved to have done, uh, since I've made totally unauthorised changes of use and I'm running a business from five adjoining residential houses with overloaded drains, inadequate air vents, the said houses having been purchased in a most irregular fashion involving the impersonation of non-whites. <laughs> Oh, yes, it spoils the fun when I admit it all like that, doesn't it, Mr. Winston? I mean, it offends the hunter and the sportsman. You know, because unless I'm very much mistaken, Mr. Winstanley, you are a sportsman. You wouldn't be trying to flatter me, would you, Mr. Perry? Oh, you're far too shrewd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I think we can overlook any little irregularities. Uh, good, jolly good, jolly good. And uh, if you want to see Mr. Dent, uh, you can see him this afternoon. He's taking part in a boxing match. Mr. Dent taking part in a boxing match? Yes. Mr. Dent of Botley Borough Council? Yes. Little short house with stick out ears? Yes. <laughs> this I must see. Yes. It's <laughs> not fair. He is, in fact, somebody his own size. He is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the first bout of the afternoon. This is a three round heavyweight and flyweight contest between, in the red corner, Mr. George Dent of Botsley versus himself. <laughs> and in the blue corner, Mr. Cedric Wilkins of Epsom versus himself. <laughs> May neither man win. Uh, you're seeing yourself off. You've got yourself so you just don't know where to turn. Now, keep jabbing away at your head. You're wide open, don't you? <laughs> Get up there and finish yourself off. Seconds away, round two. Say 
that boxing was ridiculous. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. <laughs> but everybody, everybody behaved as though it was perfectly normal. Yes, well, we asked them to join in. You see, children enjoy the ridiculous and what are adults, but larger children. And the trouble with adults is they tend to think it spoils their dignity if they enjoy the ridiculous. <laughs> I suppose most adults think it's ridiculous to enjoy things as ridiculous as that. <laughs> yes, ridiculous of them, yes. Well, I suppose you mean... Wanting to get back to your uh, delightful colleagues now, your, your thrilling paperwork, your luxurious office, splendid canteen, eh? <laughs> I suppose when the day's work is done, you have the most wonderful communal evenings. Oh, you mean sitting round the campfire under the stars, singing songs, exchanging experiences, living, loving, drinking from communal bowls, forging our separate souls into the communal psyche on the anvil of togetherness? <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> Quite right. Thank you very much, Mr. Winston. I knew there was something missing from our community. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Well, uh, I'd better be off. Yes, yes, I suppose. Mm. Uh, why don't you? Uh, why don't you stay? Mm. What could I tell people? Oh, tell the office you got flu. Tell your wife you've gone to a regional sewage seminar at Harrogate. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> the Pennell, Botchley Borough Council. Is our Mr. Winstanley here? Come here. Jenkins, Botchley Borough Council. Do you have our Mr. Pennell here? Come here. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, staff, guests, members of the Botchley Borough Council, welcome <laughs> to this totally informal evening. It's a gas fire, not a campfire, a ceiling and not the stars, but never mind, let's have fun, shall we? Oh, splendid, what's this? Tom's banana gin. Oh, splendid. Splendid. <laughs> <laughs> Super <laughs> togetherness. That's the name of the game. Ah, yes, it certainly is, CJ. That's the... Uh, <coughs> well, this is fun. Yes, here we are. <laughs> Jolly good. Uh, now, incidentally, I, I asked McBlain to pop in later on if he wanted to, and he said he'd be delighted to. <laughs> Either that or he's given me the party Thistle team for 1952, I'm not quite sure which. <laughs> but, but if he does drop in, please all make him feel welcome. Oh. Yes. Uh, oh. Well, this is... This is... this is... this is fun. <laughs> Charlie, go. Well, 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 what about another song? Ethel Merman? Eh? With a name like, like that, that, you must, must be, be a good, good singer. <laughs> they all say that. How oh, do they really? I've no talent at all. How oh, no talent isn't important, Ethel. I know an old estate agent, Well, well talent's slightly important, uh, Tom. <laughs> uh, well, 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 what about our shy vet? A few animal impressions? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jimmy? <laughs> jokes? I haven't made a joke since 1968. <laughs> I know a joke. Oh, dear, that is bad news. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 you mustn't be like that about Tom. Sure, we'd all love to hear Tom's joke. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom's joke. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. There was an English estate agent, an Irish estate agent, and a Scottish estate agent. <laughs> and they all... Oh, no. <laughs> I really don't know where you get them from. Absolutely splendid anecdote there from Tom. Jolly good, jolly good. <laughs> Well, uh, anybody else? Uh, Mr. Dent, Mr. <laughs> Sir Winstanley, know any planning shanties? Huh? Um, no, nothing there? Huh? Well, uh, yeah, this is fun, isn't it? I mean, why didn't we let our middle-aged, middle-class hair down like this before? Let it all hang out. Absolutely. Right? Well, not all of it, uh, Jimmy. Oh, no. yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Well, it's not so. Well, a little bit of it should yes. hang, I think. Yes, yes, well, this is fun. We ought to exchange beautiful experiences. Yes. Has anybody had any beautiful experiences today? Uh, yes. Uh, congratulations, Tom. Uh, <laughs> I saw something really beautiful in Addis Ababa Avenue. An old tramp picked up a filthy old fire again from the gutter and smoked it. I don't see anything beautiful in that. Well, it was very beautiful for the tramp. What a beautiful thought, Squashy Boobs. <laughs> it, shows your, it shows your understanding of people. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We are people people. I saw a beautiful song thrush. Super! It was eating a worm. Uh, oh, well, you wouldn't think it was beautiful if you were the worm. I'm not a worm. Matter of opinion. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Bad 
case. Bad form. Slipped out. Not funny. Won't make another joke from 1988. All this relaxing, making me nervous, talking too much. Sorry, carry on enjoying yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. I, I saw... Well, perhaps it wasn't all that... But I thought it was beautiful, because it didn't mean... It was just... And I suppose because of where it was. <laughs> and where was it? On the pavement outside W.H. Smith's. Oh. <laughs> and what was it? Oh, didn't I tell you? Sorry, it was nothing much. Just two Arab boys holding hands. Ah, oh, disgusting. <laughs> oh, no, no, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, that's a high, bound, prejudiced, Anglo-Saxon point of view. It's different with them. It's friendship. It doesn't mean as it would with us that they're, um... Raving poofs, like me. <laughs> Why didn't you say it? Oh, are you a rape? You a rape? Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, who cares? Let it all hang. Uh, well, some of it hang. No, who cares? Eh? <laughs> People do when you work in a small factory in the potteries. When you run into your boss in the gay clubs of the five towns. Good, good Lord, you mean this? This is. Good Lord, and you run into me. Oh, that's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> well, never mind. Now you're together, you can have a bit of a. Uh... A bit of a chat at another time, is it? Uh, he won't speak to me. Don't be bitter, lad. It's not personal. It's just that we're in a worker boss situation. We can't afford to have anything going on between us. Nah, you're in an ongoing, no goings on situation. <laughs> exactly. Mm. It's the them and us syndrome. Mm. But you're both one of them. Yeah, but I'm one of them who's one of us, and he's one of them who's one of them. Ah, I see, I see. No, 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 not a parent, we're all equal. No, class distinction is evil. So is money. What? Down with capitalism ah. there. Now, that's what I think of money. Now, there. And me! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get where I am today by tearing money into small pieces. <laughs> touch. Oh. We should all touch each other. We should all feel physical contact. It's the outward expression of inward togetherness. Uh, touching's good. Feeling's beautiful. Oh. Smacking is good, and 12 karate lessons from the Isha College of Further Education are beautiful. It's the outward expression of inward togetherness. If Reggie had been sitting there, I'd have done the same to him. Thank God I wasn't. <laughs> no, but touching is beautiful. Yeah, Super. Yeah, yeah. After, uh, abroad, they do it all the time. A Mr. Insurance salesman, you don't mind it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, not at all, I like it. Yes. Oh, no, not about that. No. <laughs> that wages friendly. Oh, I say, oh, in that case, certainly, yes. Come on, everybody touch everybody. Come on, touch everybody. I didn't get where I am today by touching everybody. OK. It's about time. I'm going to stop off the vestigial friend of mine. That's right, it works. Very relaxing. We're going to have world success. It's the new Jerusalem. Brotherly Eggles. It cleans your dragon poofties. It was a great success. Yes, I'm. Deeply contented and happy at last, darling. <sighs> oh, Reggie, you're not still worried, are uh, you? Just a little bit, darling. But I thought you were happy. Well, yes, I, I am. worry, tension and irritability were things of the past. Yes, they are, darling, they are. It's just that it's, it's... Is it too good to last? Would it all come crashing around our ears next week? Huh? 